Tanse, welcome to Métis Minute, your source for Métis news in Region 7. Today is all about the youth. You know, the people we refer to as the future. Well, I'm here to tell you that the future is now. The Emino Youth Council is doing amazing things for not only Métis youth in Ontario, but for every Métis citizen as they are building the future of the Métis nation. There are two candidates who are running for Emino Youth Council chairperson. And if you're a Métis citizen between the ages of 16 and 29, you get to vote for them. Even if you're like me and are over the ripe age of 30, I urge you to continue to watch these videos that I have with the potential youth council chair people because they are building our future and it's important to hear their opinions and their voices. I was able to have great conversations about what the youth want to create for our future and how the rest of the Métis Nation of Ontario can support them. Today we have an interview with one of the candidates for the Youth Council Chairperson, Sebastian Koprich. All right, so today we're talking um, to one of the youth candidates uh, and so for Métis youth who are voting and if they might not know who you are, maybe you want to explain a bit who you are, where you come from, and any roles or anything that you want to share with them today. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Um, I'll just start by saying my introduction in the language, which I love to do. So, bonjour, je m'appelle Sébastien, tu m'étis, puis je viens de la baie Georges. Um, so, I learned that um, over the last few years with uh, the Métis Language Initiative Advisory Team, which I've been a part of. And uh, I'm Métis from the Solomon and Berger Bedouin family lines. I live in Toronto currently, and uh, I'm studying at the University of Toronto, um, doing my master's in public health in the Indigenous health stream. So I um, had a, a long academic journey. I like to learn, <laughs> and um, I like to support Indigenous health and wellness through research um, and engaging with the Métis Nation of Ontario and the health and wellness department as well, or a big part of the, the roles that I, I, I like to dabble in through through the work that I do and and the research that uh, I get opportunities to be a part of. And of course, you're running for chairperson. So maybe if you want to explain why you're interested in getting involved in Métis politics and, and why you're running for that role. I never thought that being Métis would be political, but I was <laughs> sorely wrong <laughs> when I started getting more involved. And I guess I'd like... The reason behind it and and um and it like the reason behind getting into this role and being interested in it started when i was at the aga and the youth leadership conference um that they had last year and it was the first event where i had actually been in a room with a lot of metis youth and mm -hmm. myself I've, i'm more gravitated towards adults and older individuals like i feel like just I don't know if it's a maturity thing or if it's just the people that I hang out with and the networking that I do on my end, but um, I've never really connected with people my own age, but that was very different at the Youth Leadership Conference. A lot of us had really um, big passions and beautiful work that we were doing in school, whether it be you know art, uh, there's a lot of different things that youth were involved in. And I think that was what was missing in my friendships. Uh, mm -hmm. A lot of it was you know, they didn't have motivation for completing their school or they didn't have motivation for being a part of some creative hobby. Like when you would talk, they're just, it was like a block. But at the Youth Leadership Conference, like all of us had so much to say. We had so many <laughs> things that we wanted to teach each other. Like, oh, hey, have you been a part of this? Or this is going on, like you should come out. Um, so it, it just felt warm and welcomed. And um, Evan was the chair at that time and, and Jordan, the president. And uh, she still is um, for a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, and uh, they were so warm and welcome to me. And um, I just, yeah, they were like, Evan was the first person to come and say hi. 
uh, he was he was so joyful and it made me feel comfortable immediately because again being in a room full of people you don't know that's kind of scary even though I was I'm a theater kid so I grew up <laughs> I was like I was in musicals and stuff but um, Evan was just so nice and uh, he was goofy and funny throughout the the youth leadership conference we loved having him to to lead um, the the youth leadership conference um, and we also connected on our schoolwork and our academic journeys and um, I, I loved seeing beadwork around um, that people were wearing in their sashes. And again, like I'd been to networking events with First Nations and Inuit and, and some Métis, but never all Métis. So mm. I just felt really enriched by that. And back to this question, why chairperson? So like that energy, that feeling of warmth that like, hey, like we want to welcome you. We know that you're maybe learning or on a different you know journey than others. And we just want to make you feel welcome here in this space. So it's continuing to to keep that type of energy, to continuing to keep that welcomeness and that openness and that non-judgmental approach to just saying, hey, like, let's sit down, let's talk about where you're at. Like, what, what's been going on with your life? What resources are you aware of? Because I don't mm -hmm. need to go and tell you everything if you know something. <laughs> um, <laughs> there is a lot. <laughs> um, and, you know, what kind of cool things do you like to do? Maybe you'd like to go to this painting session later or this finger weaving session there. So. Mm -hmm. You begin to connect on on you know these traditional skills that that Métis have and um and some some of us bonded over beadwork and then you you follow each other's instagram accounts and, and it goes from there so it's just this network building this community building and that that feeling of warmness i want to continue to keep going because i want to pay that forward essentially and and make you know sure that as a youth council we're creating those amazing beautiful environments for youth to feel like they're at home and that even though they might not know their ancestry line yet or much mm -hmm. about their name or much about where their grandparents or their great grandparents are from. That's okay. Not all of us did right away. Yeah. <laughs> Many of us didn't. And it's a, it's a shared kind of journey of reconnecting. Um, so it's important that comfort is a priority, I guess, at these, some of these events. And uh, I, I really love talking to people. I'm an outgoing person. <laughs> yeah. um, and I like to bead. So if there's beaters in the room, where, wherever I go, I usually connect with them on that. But just, yeah, facilitating those 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 beautiful spaces, continuing to make you feel warm and welcome. Yeah. And, and as you were saying, you're a Métis youth yourself and just even spending time with Métis youth. Um, what do you see as some of the main issues that might be affecting um, MNO youth today? I think um, like one of those would be that I think a lot of us, and you know, maybe I'm biased to this because I like being on the land, but I think a lot of us haven't been given as many opportunities to go out and do on the land activities. Hmm. And you know, that could be something as simple as let's go learn how to make a fire, or let's go and tan fish, or do like like let's go and fish together. Community events, community hunting, community harvesting, community like there's so much that we can all like learn and absorb when we're young and we just we we fit it all in there and connecting more with elders and senators mm -hmm. is one of those gaps that I see a lot and hear a lot from youth so I guess like for youth we we have this desire to learn a lot of us um, but also we have this desire to share so mm -hmm. creating opportunities for youth who want to share to meet those who want to learn and then also making those spaces and networking between elders and senators who have knowledge that they've learned over their lifetime um, that, that we can really learn and adapt from and grow as individuals to, to those networking opportunities are primarily at the youth leadership conference. And then for the rest of the year, I think a lot of us are connecting, you know, on a personal level with our, with our own small social groups, but there's few of us, I think, who, who can connect, you know, to the bigger group, to the bigger mm -hmm. picture. Um, so having more, whether it be virtual or in person events to kind of plan and then see, okay, like what's the budget look like? What can we realistically do? Um, can we do at the local level at regions, you know, to, to have more on the land events is the youth council wanting to support this. Um, the other thing that, uh, I think is really important is promoting more information about our self-government and bill C-53 and voting. And, and just like general knowledge, like, hey, let's do a little workshop. Let's do a one-on-one. Let's um, like, what do you understand about it? Um, we all, I think, hate surveys. Maybe let's not, 
at this point for that. <laughs> let's, let's have like a little hangout. Like, a, you know, the MNOYC has been doing these T-series, which I think have been great. Uh, I think, um, you know, seeing feedback about maybe is there enough youth that are being a part of this? Maybe can we make it more engaging? Um, who who do you want to see in the T-series? Like, is this person maybe not as interesting as this person? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, getting getting more youth to be engaged um, so that we can have those events, so that we can talk to them to listen. Do you do you want to engage with this? Um, and then and then us on our end being like, okay, we've got this little nugget of like self-government info. Let's like, you know, spread those resources out so that it's easy to access. And then through them, they could be like, oh, hey, like Joe, let's let's check out this resource or hey, Mary, like I just found this like and then, mm. it, it, you know, it spreads. So you start at the source, you're like, who's involved right now? And then it can information can get spread that way. Yeah, and, and you talked about engaging um, with the youth, which is obviously important if you're on a youth council, but are there any ways that you think the MNO in general just can help better serve the youth? Yeah, and this this is a sticky question because it's like, <laughs> I don't want to ever say that the, it's the MNO's fault. It's more like um, it's an ongoing teamwork that we need to facilitate open communication, open line of communication with. I think they've been really successful at doing this. Um, and then there's also some areas where there could be improvement. So just to touch on like being successful, the youth council is a part of the MNO. And so without the youth council, there's already like a lack of, of youth voices. So in the MNO, having a youth council that is its own elected, um, you know, council for the whole province like that, that's already a beautiful thing because then we're able to create infrastructure for youth from each region to be re representatives. And so the MNO has done a great job at having this at least be, you know, a piece of, of mm. our government and a piece of how youth can can share their voices forward and, and have positions on council and to be politically involved. And, you know, people in these positions and people like the candidates for these positions are learning so much and so fast so we can be positive role models for other youth who are interested in those positions as well um so again a good thing um this is something that has been ongoing but i think there's always gaps in youth voices and no matter where we go like i think we could have more um, panel sessions um, whether that be at the aga or at um, more generalized meetings that are not specifically just youth like the youth leadership conference, we're all, we're having a good time. But if we're at the AGA, maybe there's specific topics that we could have youth panelists to go up and share their, their experiences mm. and their insights on that. I think that could be something we could, um, you know, see being helpful um, in addressing that um, experience of Métis youth not being included in a lot of things. Um, so that would be a great thing if the MNO could um, kind of, work with youth to, to create panel sessions, whether that be again at the AGA or at other um, events where we can have the youth um, youth panelists. And, and also as we're developing this, this Bill C-53 out and, and well, it's kind of, it's already developed. We're, 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 we're going to get it. <laughs> yeah. We're going to get it. Um, but developing the constitution as we're, you know, getting to this exciting time where a constitution is is in the books. Like we, I think we can we can include more youth in, in that process as well because there are many um, AT youth who, you know, have a misunderstanding or uh, not a misunderstanding. There are many youth who don't know where the appropriate resources are to get the full picture of our self-government and yeah. how we're moving forward. And in the beginning, I even had to reach out to Jordan um, to kind of ask, where can I find this information? I went to the Métis Rights Conference in the fall, and I, again, I got more resources that way, but not everyone is at these opportunities and at these conferences. So we need to make it, I think, more accessible. Um, and uh, the MNO, I think, can, can work towards creating access to those resources. Um, collaboratively again with the youth council just having that open line of communication like maybe they can support in certain ways that the youth council has some limitations hmm. yeah and, and you mentioned self-governance um so as we 
as you said, inevitably <laughs> move towards self-government. Um, what is important to you um, to build a strong Métis nation? I think uh, that ongoing uh, resource link, like I shouldn't have to go on the MNO website and search around for it. And I think right now they've done a successful job of this because you go on that MNO website elections and then you click on it, nominators, mm -hmm. candidates, you can go through that. You can learn really quickly. Um, but after the elections, is all that going to go away on a separate tab that's you've got to search for? And and do people know where to find that information? So I think um, that like the Instagrams, the newsletters, um, the things that we have existing in place, we need to include a section that is like, hey, like self-government staff. Like th this is some things that we can maybe update on. Or maybe if there's nothing to really update at that time, then we don't include information. But to clearly state this is a self-government step um, that we can we can maybe highlight. And if you have questions and then maybe there's like a, a big response, then we can like, oh, let's hold a session. We've got, you know, 50 youth who just emailed us about, oh, I want to learn more. Or what mm -hmm. does this mean? Or, you know, what is that? So then, then there's an, a, a clear need for, for having that type of engagement. So having those resources available, accessible, and like consistent, um, because this is going to be like, not just this year, this is going to be <laughs> in the next year, right? This is, this is our politics. This is um, as we move forward. And it's, and it is exciting and, and getting youth to see how it can be not just boring civics class, but also, <laughs> um, you know, this is part of our identity. This is part of our relationship with the Canadian government. And, like to really highlight that this means that the government is not going to just see us as section 35 rights holders. We're not just, you know, a part of the indigenous representation in the Canadian constitution. We're going to be a self-governing nation, a self-governing people. Um, and having that government is, is so cool. Mm. <laughs> seeing, seeing that it was cool took a while for me. So <laughs> Um, making sure that we have resources to, to to get other youth to have opportunities to also see that it, it might be cool. <laughs> get them, yeah, yeah thinking. Politics, but, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and, and you kind of explained a few um, a few things, but is there anything, um, if should you win uh, the chairperson position that you'd like to do in your time, um, yeah, if you're elected? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I guess like to summarize, um, networking is the big one because um, I like that's a very broad thing to say, but networking as as such as we've got youth in regions one all the way to nine. So we've got youth living all over the province. And I think we have this disconnect between regions. So to create, I guess, more um, maybe group type of networking so that we've got regions maybe northern Ontario has like a little virtual session where we can get together with youth and and identify some ways in which you know the youth council might be able to support an engagement type whether that be on the land again depending on the resources that we have um, and and then for the southern Ontario piece as well because we've got a really dense urban population of, of mm. Métis that don't have direct access to their harvesting region so bridging that as well, um, whether that be creating resources for um, like harvesting workshops or uh, tanning and fish hiding, fish um, fish tanning or fishing or um, being on the land, starting fires, uh, maybe just going for a boat ride and, and getting a history lesson. Like we went mm -hmm. to the, the Sioux, um, like at, at Sault Ste. Marie, we went out on the, on the motorized canoe. <laughs> um, <laughs> With, uh, with the senators and uh, some of the executive team. Um, and that was that was beautiful because we had some context of, of the river lots and Sioux. So whether it be history, you know, the water, the um, being on the land, things like that um, with like a more consolidated group rather than just in the regions. Because although we have our own, you know, regional things going on and our nuggets of funding and our councils, I don't think we communicate enough Cross province, and that's yeah. you know the chairperson is um, not just you know a, like a youth rep. They're also like trying to connect these pieces across the province. So working with Evan, um, who is congratulations to him, being <laughs> the, as the youth president, 
um, and seeing, you know, sharing his vision um, and uh, supporting the youth council um, as as well, like not just going out and saying like, let's, let's, we can do this in a year, right? Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> but, but working with Evan, working with the youth re representatives, some who have been on council for a while and saying like, do you also agree that there's this, this disconnect? Um, and are there ways that you think that we should address this? Because I'm not an expert. I'm learning. So <laughs> yeah. going to the experts, um, mm -hmm. listening, and uh, and also hearing youth who have been living there for a while. And then the other thing is that, again, connecting with the networking is also the on the land. I don't, I don't think we have enough on the land engagements. Can this all be accomplished in a year? No. But four years, there's maybe some pieces that we can add in there and um, some more opportunities to hear youth perspectives on it. Yeah, and, and if we want you elected as chairperson, if youth want you, they're going to need to go out and vote. So why do you think it's important for youth to vote in this election? I think this speaks back to the beginning of our learning journey about our politics, right? If at minimum you're learning and you don't know about our self-government agreement, if and you don't know about Bill, C Bill C-53, this action of voting is you saying, I'm willing to learn. I'm willing to take the first step and vote. And if you already know, then you should go and vote because you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, but collectively, you know, as youth, we have so many of us across the province. And I think we underestimate sometimes ourselves mm -hmm. um, and how powerful our voices can be. Um, so, you know, just, just, you go online, you click a few buttons, um, you know, make informed decisions. Don't just go <laughs> click a few buttons, but at least click a button um, Go and, and take the time to, to see, you know, each candidate's position and point of view. And then you get a feel and a taste for, um, you know, what, why we're doing what we're doing um, and some of the differences in, in the positions, right? Because there's youth representative candidates, there's the chairperson candidates, there's the vice chair candidates. That's a big one. Um, so like these positions all have different levels and different roles and responsibilities. You get to kind of learn about that at the same time. So again, going back to, if you know nothing about our self-government right now, which is totally okay, <laughs> yeah. then this is your chance to kind of get a feel for that. And, and you might be, you know, pleasantly surprised by how cool it is and uh, how you can be involved. And I want to emphasize that whether I get elected or not, the work that I want to be a part of, I'll still continue to do. And, you know, if um, the other candidate for the chairperson gets elected, I want to support their vision. So it's not just about this election. It's about us moving forward as youth and thinking about our, what can we help with? What can we offer? Um, how can we connect with one another? So I still want to build those relationships. It's not just specific to this position. Um, but I think with on the Youth Council, I see this vision of connecting uh, more with youth and supporting um, the organization of more um, on the land events. So if I'm elected, those are some great things that I would want to help to facilitate. But if I'm not, I still want to help build those relationships with other youth so that I know, you know, where you are, where you come from. I don't, I'm not as connected with the Northern region, but I was just up there in North Bay and that's not even the farthest. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, I, and, I, and I like it. I like it. It's the gateway to the North. So you made it to the, the gateway. Yes. <laughs> yeah. the, the, the Southern of the North. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, that was great. Thank you for sitting down for an interview. Um, voting is currently now open, um, but um, if there's anything else you want to say, uh, say it before people go vote. But I think you actually, go vote. <laughs> yeah, go vote. <laughs> go vote. Yeah. We'd like to thank Sebastian for sitting down with us today to discuss his candidacy for youth council chairperson. Voting is currently open. And if you're unsure how to vote, please, please check out our previous Métis Minute episode on the ways you can make your voice heard this PC MNO election. And of course, you can find all the available voting information on the Métis Nation of Ontario's website. Merci for watching, and we'll see you down the river.